If we have any questions, we can take them now. Uh, so, uh, why did the Quran remind um, Walid of Musa and Prophet Musa and Ibrahim? Did the pagans of the, the Arab pagans at the time also believe in Musa and Ibrahim? They may have not believed in. Uh, well, they definitely believed in Ibrahim. They 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 considered they revered Ibrahim. The Arabs also revered Musa السلام, and they were surrounded by many Jews who lived in the Arabian Peninsula. You know, in fact, on many occasions, the Arabs would go to the Jewish rabbis to receive news about prophecies. So they gave weight to the words of, of their... Now, they may not have believed in everything that was written in their scriptures, but they definitely... Uh, gave a lot of merit to the uh, the scriptures of uh, of Musa, and of course they held Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, with great reverence. So perhaps you know this is why that this is why these two uh, were singled out. And um, here's a question someone asked online. Um, do we know in what form the scriptures revealed to Prophet Adam uh, were? Uh, were they engraved on stone, for instance? We don't know. We, we have the the narrations don't specify the uh, you know the medium in which that the which, which these scriptures were recorded. They they could have been. I mean. It does what it mentions the word sahifa, so presumably it was recorded in some way, but we don't know. And again, when we say you know the scriptures of Adam, because human society was very simple at the time, you're not going to have an elaborate code of living, there's no elaborate sharia that you find at the time of Musa, you know, some, some simple ethical guidelines probably you know comprise these. Uh, in these scriptures but we don't there's no mention of whether they were carved in stone or written in any other way we don't know what we know is what the hadith mentions that he received 10 scriptures 10 types of uh revelation thank you and um in the example of one who establishes a sinful practice and bears the sins who the, of those who follow him do the sinners get blamed less because they're following someone else's tradition or do they bear the full burden of their sins and on top of that, the one who started that tradition gets to have additional sins on his back? I mean, they're, they're definitely not, they're not less accountable. They're, you know, they're accountable, but definitely the one who established that practice will be, uh, will be punished more severely. So that... They're not less innocent, but it just, you know, they're fully accountable because at the end of the day, they have free will. But the one who established that uh, that practice definitely bears a, a heavier burden. That's why even in the zi Ziyarat Ashura, you know, we, we condemn all of the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt. We condemn all those who have animosity and who oppress the Ahlul Bayt. But we specifically single out the ones who established, who paved the road for the aggression against the, uh, the Ahlul Bayt. That's why what happened in Saqifa, what happened immediately after the death of the Prophet, those individuals who were the first ones to oppress Lady Fatima al Zahra, they are singled out because they are the ones who embolden others to uh to persecute the family of the prophet you know man they established this institution of oppression and persecution against the family of the prophet so the one who who establishes this practice definitely carries a heavier burden but that doesn't mean that you know that the others are are innocent they're you know at the end of the day they have free will so they're also held accountable 
Uh, thank you. And also, um, on the same note, uh, why do we say that in uh, Jamaat Salat, that the person leading the Salat is taking responsibility for everyone else's Salat, or he takes the, the burden of their Salat on their shoulders? That also sounds like it's a similar thing. No, when, when we say, you're talking about the verse, how it relates to the verse? Yes. Now, burden here refers to specifically about sin, right? So when the Quran says Allah tazru azra tun wuzdu you don't you don't bear the burden of of sin, you know when the Imam carries the responsibility of reciting on behalf of the Ma'mum, that's not a burden. He should consider that an honor. So there's that. There's, so yeah, I mean, physically speaking, it may be considered a bit of a burden, but the burden that's mentioned in the ayah is the burden of sin, not not the burden of you know, exertion, exertion, or effort, or physical toil. Got, got, gotcha. Thank you. Salaam alaikum, Shaykh. Alaikum salam. You had mentioned about the book, you know, where um, the Messenger of Islam, sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa sallam, and about her, uh, you know, have a dialogue about the um, revelations of the divine books. Yes. Four. Uh, can I have the name of the book, oh, please, or in which um, book of hadith it is recorded? You're talking about the the wasiya of uh, of Abu Dhar and uh, and the Prophet. Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I'll have to check the. Uh, for sure, it's mentioned in Bihar and Anwar. I know that for sure, but so I want I'm I'm not sure if it's mentioned in. Uh, I don't think it's mentioned in Al Kafi. But I'll have to get back to you on that. I'll find the, the source on that. Yeah. And uh, if I, uh, you know, try to Google, do you think I would find this? Check oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. If you type, you know, uh, was, was, it's even, I think it's even on alislam.org. If you just type in the wasiyah of the Holy Prophet to Abu Dhar, you should be able to find it there. Oh, thank you, Shay. Any other questions or comments? Anyone is asking? Yeah. And um, could you uh, describe what you meant by the messengers of great resolve? Those, um, I forget what the Lulazm. Lulazm. Now, the messengers of great resolve, now, why are they called messengers of great resolve? Because azim comes from the word azima, to be very determined, to have resolve. It's because Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and the Holy Prophet, they are bearers of law. Meaning that they are introducing something that is new. Right? So Nuh السلام, is introducing something new and something in addition to what was revealed before him. Ibrahim is the same. Musa is the same. Isa alayhi salam is the same. And naturally when you're introducing new laws or additional laws, there's going to be resistance and opposition. This is why Isa alayhi salam was vehemently opposed by the Jews. Because he was introducing or he was he was pointing out, you know, certain innovations. He's bringing a new revelation. So when you bring new revelation, you face opposition from disbelievers and also the believers who are still following the sharia of the previous messenger. So you're almost, so you have... You have more obstacles to overcome. So, so for example, with the Holy Prophet, an example, I'll give you the example of Rasulullah. So Rasulullah has to deal with the opposition of the Kuffar, the Meccans. He has to also deal with the Jews who refuse to believe that the Quran now is taking the place of Torah. So that's why you see the Jews are always testing the Prophet's knowledge. The Christians are the same. So the prophets, these anbiya of ulul az, they need 
a lot of determination because they face the most opposition by virtue because of the the revel the new revelation because of the additional parts of the sharia that they're introducing because of the fact that they're abrogating certain laws that existed before that are that are now void is that clear is that the only uh, reason uh, but also the also their uh, their messengers their messages are universal so the the teachings of of nuh are universal you know ibrahim musa so they have universal a universal message there are some prophets that are sent to specific villages specific regions of the world and they may offer them a kind of customized you know religious tradition that fulfills their needs that's not necessarily applicable to others whereas the anbiya of ulul az they uh their teachings apply to all of humanity 